Get good. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Huskies Overtime. I'm Nick Spiliopoulos, and joining me this evening, three SCSU Husky Hockey alum, Rachel Herzog, Jack Ashan, and Jordan Stewart. How's everybody doing so far this evening? Doing, good. doing well. Yeah. well. Thanks for having us, Nick. No problem. Glad to hear it. So the premise of what we're going to do tonight is we are going to recap the SCSU women's hockey game that just concluded in Duluth. And we'll talk about that for a little bit. And then we will pivot over to a preview of the men's hockey game tonight at 805 against number four ranked Denver. Um, so guys, first, um, unfortunately, SCSU when being, they ended up being swept against the Bulldogs this weekend, dropping this afternoon's game uh, five to one, but there were some definite bright spots to take away when you play the number six team in the nation in women's hockey and you hold them without a goal in the first period. Um, you know, how important is that if you want to come out with a win, Rachel, you can start. Well, I think it's really important, Nick. I mean, St. Cloud state plays in the WCHA, which is the best league for women's college hockey. So all throughout the year, you're going to be playing top 10 teams. So being able to hold out on a team for at least a period is a good takeaway, but Definitely the goaltending tonight was kind of the star of the game. Emma Paluzny, although she let in five goals tonight, she faced over 50 shots, I believe. So definitely a strong suit for St. Cloud and has been for the past four or five years or so. Yeah, 55 shots on goal uh, was what Duluth put up. But uh, Jordan, you know, can you speak a little bit more as to the importance of, you know, having an even period against the top team? Yeah, I think it's huge. Um, I would see it as an accomplishment against a top team like that. Um, so although five goals went in, there were a lot of good things that we could take away from today. Um, from what I saw, the puck movement was great. There was speed all over the ice. Um, and once again, to add on to what Rachel said, Emma Palouse needed awesome. Goaltending is huge right now. So keep that up. And to the start to this WCHA season, we've seen a little bit of a lull in terms of Power play goals scored, but you can't take that away from St. Cloud. They held the Bulldogs 0 for 4 on the power play. Uh, Jordan, you know, special teams can be a big factor in any game, but how important is it, like we mentioned, about a, against a top team like Duluth? Well, I think remembering from when I played, we took a lot of pride in our D zone. So power play is a really strong suit for us. I think, um, you know, pride in the D zone, and then we can we can work down the ice the rest of the way. Um, but having good team, or um, sorry, having good special teams against really high caliber teams such as UMD, um, I think, you know, could could keep us at a compete level to where we can hold them for more than one period in the future. And the Huskies put up 16 block shots, uh, leading the charge. Hannah Bates and Olivia Hansen each with three to their name. Rachel on the D end. Um, you know, as a former defender yourself, how important is it to eat those shots, whether it's even strength or on the special teams? I mean, me personally, I definitely took a lot of pride in blocking shots, whether it was in a game or in practice. I didn't really shy away from it. Definitely bruises all over your body, but it was always worth it just because you kind of get that satisfaction of helping out your team, whether you take it in the wrong place or not. It's definitely huge and I think it's obviously overlooked because on the stat sheet everybody always looks at points goals assists but at the end of the at the end of the day against a big top 10 team like UMD taking those block shots can be a game-changing play and Jack we'll get your advice on this too you know what's your mentality about blocking shots I mean at any level of the game high school college and now hopefully pros yeah it's huge especially being a defenseman um you know just seeing your the bench and here in the bench uh, after you block shots, usually, you know, louder than um, maybe even a goal sometimes, but depending on, you know, the time of the game, but it's just like they mentioned the satisfaction of, you know, it does hurt when it hits you in the wrong spot. And sometimes um, when, when you're down on the ice, you, you know, you saved your goalie from letting up a goal or whether that's a, a goal or a block shot or a pass back door or something like that. It, it really does give you the satisfaction that you're, you're helping out the, the people that you love in the locker room. And, you know, Jack, you talked about hearing that energy from the bench because it might not be something that fans realize or the whole arena would realize, but just how, how much louder do you think it is when there are no fans and you're just, you're relying on the bench to get that energy in terms of, you know, chance or stick taps on the boards and such? Yeah, it's huge, especially, you know, today's game with, with no fans, it's uh, all about momentum swings and, 
like it, like I mentioned, whether it's a block shot or a goal or a hit or something like that, um, you have to be on your toes and it's all about communication, whether that's, you know, hand to hand communication or if it's a block shot and everybody's cheering for you. So it really helps out when, when you're helping out your teammates and, you know, when they're cheering, it also helps you out because you know, you didn't just do it for no reason. And Rachel, you know, we have watched the Huskies the last two weekends and there's two defenders that really stick out, both new to the St. Cloud State Huskies team, the freshman Adela Skirdlova and Addie Scribner, the sophomore transfer from Ohio State. How can you assess their play through their first four games in a Husky sweater? Well, they played at home last weekend against Mankato, and I think at that point we saw their offensive power. We definitely had more um, offensive zone time that last weekend, so we definitely got to see what they had on the blue line but I think they kind of showed their skills in the defensive zone this weekend, having it be a more competitive component or opponent. So kind of assessing both of their skills last weekend in the offensive zone and this weekend on the defensive zone, I think they still have a lot to learn and a lot to grow from. Um, granted it's only two weekends into the season, but I definitely think they show a lot of promise and coach McDonald should be really excited about the potential that they have for this season. And Jordan, the Huskies put 44 shots. They had 44 shots, but only 21 of them made it to the net. How can the Huskies improve on getting those shots through the defenders and eventually onto the goaltender? I think just releasing the puck a little bit sooner, maybe taking a step to the middle and um, not being afraid to just put the puck on net and have someone crash the net for a rebound. Um, I think oftentimes as hockey players, I'm guilty of it too. We, we skate, we try to get that perfect shot. But when we try to get that perfect shot, we end up wasting a lot of time that, you know, you take kind of an ugly shot and ends up on net and it could confuse the goalie. It could go in. Who knows? Right. So, um, yeah, other than that, I'll just keep communicating, keep working. They'll fall. They'll get to the net soon enough. Definitely a true statement. Last weekend against Mankato, we saw Mackenzie Bordry uh, just kind of in a effort heave it you know, to the slot and it bounced off uh, former SCSU Husky Taylor Wemple off her skate and into the net. So, I mean, good things happen when you put it on net. I mean, we saw that with the men's team against Western Michigan. We can talk about that a little bit later, but I mean, assessing the first four games for the Huskies, not terrible. You know that Duluth is a good team. They're ranked number six for a reason. Um, but Rachel and Jordan, Rachel first, you know, what's the atmosphere for the team when you are on the road in a place like Duluth? Well, it's obviously different from being at your home rink. It's a different setting having to be in hotels. And granted, with the time that we're living in today, you can't necessarily be walking around the entire city, going into shops and everything, considering everything is closed. So it's definitely a lot more downtime on the road, just kind of being cooped up in your, um, in your apartment or in your hotel room. Why did I say apartment? hotel room. So I think the energy is harder to come by on the road. At least that's what I took away from being on the team last year, just trying to motivate yourself and keep yourself in that game mindset on the road rather than being at home and having that home field advantage. Jordan, what about you? I think right now for the girls, um, we can't really relate to what they're like feeling, having no fans, having no really like, um, atmosphere that they can like feel with the fans there so I think that that may um, play a hard role in it but when I was there when I was playing I thought Duluth was a pretty fun place to play at um, not as many fans as you would get at Minnesota or Wisconsin or anything like that but it was a good amount um, the ice was good but kind of what Rachel alluded to here um, typically when we would play in Duluth it would be negative degrees as well so you're cooped yeah. up um, you go on you go on a walk and you freeze like your eyelashes and your nose is just like frozen. Um, so that was like the one thing I had a difficulty with, like just trying to get like move in, stay loose. Um, but I think as a team, we worked pretty well together, just encouraging, getting ready, like having fun in the locker room, whatever it may be. But yeah, so. And the closing thoughts on the women's side, we can't go without talking about freshman goaltender Sonia Hola. In her debut, 37 save shutout against Mankato on Friday night. Unfortunately, she's dropped her last two starts and was pulled yesterday after allowing four goals. But, Rachel, how important is Sonny to this team this year? 
I definitely think it's important in the factor of Emma Paluzny. She played all of the games from last season. And I know talking with her this year, she's really fired up to have another goaltender that can contest against the teams in our league because playing every single game on the team, on a team like St. Cloud state, where you face a ton of shots, every single game playing two days in a row, every single weekend can get really exhausting. So I think she had a great college debut with her first shutout and getting her first collegiate win. She did incredible that game. And I think she's just only going to succeed further into the season. And Jordan, what do you remember being a freshman playing your first game uh, in college? Might seem um, like a while, it might seem like a while ago, but. I was feeling all of the emotions, scared, excited, anxious, nervous. Um, but when it came down to it, after the first few shifts, you really settle in to the speed. Um, you know, you get, you're getting the confidence from your teammates and from your coaches. Um, so that's what I remember, but. <laughs> I definitely think Sonny also had a good opponent to play against for her first game. I mean, Mankato and St. Cloud is always a relatively close matchup. So I think that was a good ease into the league. I mean, I don't know about you, Jordan, but my first collegiate game was against Wisconsin who was the number one team in the nation. And that was horrifying. I remember being so, so scared. And that was just a very intimidating opponent to play for your first collegiate game. So I definitely think that she ha played well against Mankato and definitely got lucky with having a very competitive opponent opponent for her first game. And uh, Jack, do you remember anything from, from your first time on a college ice and game action, stuff like that? Yeah, I think it was against Mankato my freshman year. Um, same thing, like in the locker room, uh, everybody's kind of getting pumped up and you're almost sitting in your, <clears throat> in your stall, just kind of feeling like you're alone because you're just like, I'm, you're thinking through so many different things going through your head, you're picturing the game. But once you get out on the ice, it's, uh, it's pretty breathtaking just to, you know, I remember my first shift, I was just gassed and I don't even think I did anything. It's probably <laughs> just from breathing so hard and being so nervous. But um, once the game goes on, you kind of forget about it. And it's a really cool feeling just to, I think I remember feeling like, oh, I guess I'm not nervous anymore. We can do this. So it was, it was a fun experience. And um, yeah, Mankato, my first game, it was fun. And now we'll pivot forward to the looming matchup that we have tonight on the men's side for the SCSU hockey team. Number four, Denver will play your very own St. Cloud State Huskies. Jack, first I want to ask, you know, what do you remember about playing Denver in the, you know, in your time at St. Cloud? Obviously, one year you clinched the Penrose at home against the Pioneers, but just what's it like to play against a team like Denver? Yeah, it's awesome. It's definitely a different game um, playing, you know, different teams in the NCHC. You got to approach it differently. But Denver's a team that goes up and down the ice really fast. They're really skilled, um, great goaltending, greatly coached. So it's kind of more like a chess match, um, you know, where the momentum's going, who's kind of feeling it that night. Um, you know, power play always comes in, power play, penalty kill. They've always had a good power play, um, very skilled players, like I mentioned. So it was always a really, good, really fun matchup. Um, St. Cloud and, and Denver and I think uh, you know going out to Denver it's a little bit more difficult when you're in the altitude and you know you get there on a Wednesday and your lungs are really hurting so uh, it'll be kind of interesting to watch uh, both teams playing in Omaha in the bubble. And you know you mentioned kind of the altitude and how that might play a factor but Jack can you imagine I mean you haven't experienced it Rachel or Jordan you guys haven't experienced it either but can you imagine playing an NCHC game without fans? No, it's that's got to be the weirdest feeling. Um, I'm sure the guys are somewhat getting used to it by now. Uh, I mean, I don't think you can fully get used to it when you when you score a big goal. Uh, I remember I watched Fitzy score his first big goal, and I know he's so pumped up, but there has to be a moment of lull where you're kind of looking up in the stands and, uh, you know, you don't see anybody, you don't hear anything but music and uh, guys touching the glass or the board. So it's uh, definitely different, a little different aspect, but I'm sure that uh, there's an instant maybe a second or two where you get all pumped up and then there's a, there's quite the law without the fan. And one of the storylines in Omaha has been, you know, just listening to the play-by-play -play commentary with Ben Holden and Alex Heinert, the boards seem to be very lively. They, and that means that the puck is going hard off the boards, kind of crazy um, rebounds or deflections. Jack, did you notice that in Omaha when you played there? 
Yeah, I did. Um, I don't know whether that has to do with, uh, I think it's on a, a basketball court too. So it, maybe the boards come in and out and they're just fresh. I don't know um, what really comes into that, but I definitely do realize that when, when you're playing, um, it was always, you know, pregame skate, you're, I'd always be walking, walking the blue line and throwing it off the back end and seeing how, how far it would come out. So it's definitely in most of the minds of the players. And um, I think you can use it to an advantage and it also can be a mystery sometimes. So it's a pretty uh, unique aspect to, to that rink. Rachel, what kind of challenges might that pose to a defender when you have the lively boards behind you? Well, I mean, as a defender, it can be a blessing and a curse. Just like Jack said, I did the same exact thing in a pregame skate, kind of walking along the blue line, kind of testing the back end of the boards, just kind of seeing where the puck will squirt out from. So if you're on the blue line as a defenseman, kind of using it as an advantage, being able to kind of shoot it wide and hoping it kind of squirts out in front of the net. But on the flip side, if you're in the defensive zone, you kind of also have to be aware of that because you got to be mindful of picking up sticks, kind of knowing that you have the advantage in the offensive zone means you have the disadvantage in the defensive zone. So just, you have to just be more aware and being, yeah, being aware of your surroundings and making sure you're doing what you need to in front of the net. And Jordan, what about from a forwards perspective, are you trying to, to increase the bank passes that you make in the offensive zone, or do you just try and stick to your game? A little bit to what Rachel said, just being aware of it. Um, if we're aware of it as a team as a whole, um, we might use like behind the net and see how far it can bounce out on the other side. But typically we would stick to our game um, and not think or play too much into the active boards. But um, in the defensive zone, it could be problematic, rimming the puck, um, trying to break it out from the D. I personally had some issues with that sometimes where it would just take an odd bounce. It's like, all right, well, I guess we're right back in the zone. We'll <laughs> down on the other side. <laughs> And Jack, as we bring it back to the men's team, they got a four to three win last game against the Broncos of Western Michigan. Kind of, it was a goal that happened in the last minute of the game. Definitely caught everyone by surprise, but how do you take the momentum that you got from the first game in the way that it ended into this big matchup against Denver? Yeah, I mean, they got to the point where they did um, you know, prior to that unlucky or lucky goal, I should say, uh, off of a perfect shot. So I think they played really well. They came out super hot, which is, should be kind of a focus point is, you know, same start, but we got to maintain it a little bit more, um, into the second period. I think it kind of got a little, I don't know, um, maybe without the fans, it was a little bit more boring, um, playing and they just kind of lulled into that. But I think with their start and, uh, where they did get to before that goal is, uh, got to be a focus point for, for them going into play number four, I think Denver. So, yeah, I think it should be a good matchup and um, it shouldn't really change much because, you know, it's their second game of the season. They got new guys coming in, maybe a few guys coming out of the lineup. And uh, I think hopefully David's uh, ready to be prepared for a really skilled and fast Denver team. And in your senior season, you played with what is now the sophomore class and they've got some big names, Zach Okabe, Yami Kranola, Andre Trable, just to name a few. What can you say about the class that were freshmen in your senior season? Yeah, I was watching the game uh, whenever that was against Western, and you could just see more confidence in them. Um, it does, you know, it takes some guys longer than than uh, others, and not necessarily last year did they have a bad year, but, you know, there was a few games where you could see it in their eyes where they were a little bit more uh, nervous or, you know, not as confident as they were. Um, I was really pumped to see Kyler, <coughs> Kyler Cub could get a – his first goal and he would do that all the time in practice, um, you know, score those, you know, between the, the stick and kind of a nifty goal. And um, to see him have the confidence to do in the game against a, a good opponent in Western Michigan, it was uh, really cool to see. And Spencer Meyer, one of the hometown heroes, so to speak, born and raised in Sartell, Minnesota, now dons the sea. You held the position as captain last year. What can you speak uh, to the positives that Spencer Meyer can bring as a captain to this team? Yeah, well, he definitely has a locker room. Um, he's got a lot of trust in the whole team and the coaching staff. So that's where you kind of have to begin is off the ice and, you know, bringing the new guys, not even freshmen. They got the two transfers coming in too. So um, just having the locker room and making sure everybody's comfortable with you telling them what to do and what not to do, not necessarily all the time, but when you have to is uh, – 
is a big thing for him. And I know that he's done a really good job. Um, I'm sure he's learned from Jimmy and myself. And I think he's a perfect fit for that. And uh, yeah, I think they're just going to have a good year with him and he's going to lead the way like he should. And, you know, Spencer, the third straight defenseman to have the C for the Huskies. Um, Jack, final thoughts as we head into the matchup just a little bit over two hours away against the Denver Pioneers. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to watch it. Uh, I cooped up in my hotel right now. I got nothing to do. And even if I did have something to do, I'd probably cancel to watch the game. Um, should be a really good game. I think it's going to be up and down the ice. And I, I really hope that the, the Huskies come out as fast as they did against Western because it was really fun to watch. But I, I hope they maintain that because Denver's a team that, you know, they can they can be hiding in the shadows for a little bit. And you can be down two or three goals by, by the time you blink. So it's uh, it's going to be a fun game to watch, and I'm excited for it. Rachel, final thoughts? I'm also really excited, just like you, Jack. I'm cooped up here at home, literally nothing to, do, nothing to do all day. So all I've been doing is watching hockey. I watched, I've been watching games since 12 o'clock today. So I'm just itching to be, be able to finally watch St. Cloud tonight at 8, 8.05 and hoping for the same things Jack said, just hoping to get off on a good foot and just keep up pace with Denver. And hopefully a lot more freshmen will be showing throughout this game today. I know a couple of them are sitting out from – um, the game on Tuesday so hopefully they kind of find their way into the lineup and get that first game day touch in the SCSU sweater and last but not least Jordan final thoughts as we head into the matchup against Denver also very excited always a fan of the Huskies so you know always hoping for a win and I can't wait to see um, them come out of the gate hard tonight and uh, hopefully come out on top just a reminder for everybody, Puck Drop is at 8.05 tonight. If you don't already have your subscription, subscribe to nchc.tv so you can watch all of the Huskies home or away games, especially now while they are in the pod down in Omaha, Nebraska. But for everybody here today, thank you for being here. Don't forget to check out the SESU Huskies YouTube channel as well. Lots of great content from myself, Rachel Herzog, Sam Getzinger. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can be up to date on everything Husky athletics. But that'll do it here for Huskies Overtime. For Rachel Herzog, Jack Ashan, Jordan Stewart, I'm Nick Spiliopoulos. Thanks for joining us. And as always, go Huskies. <laughs>